Hello, it's me, DB, and welcome to All Things Brass and Technology. And today is going to be episode two of DB Talks Trumpet. Now, all DB Talks Trumpet is about is just tips that I've learned along the way from just playing music, being in musical situations, and my teachers, and, you know, just experiences. So this is episode two, so listen Let's get to it. But before, if you like the content that I bring to this channel, All Things Brass and Technology, please watch the video, then subscribe. So right now, let's get it. Okay, let's get into it. So tip one, when I was a student at Berkeley College of Music, I remember it was either J.J. Johnson or Slide Hampton, two unbelievable legends of the trombone in jazz, right? They, I, I, I can't remember which one it was, but one of them were giving a clinic, and I went, and... Um, you know, I used to get bumps on my lips, you know, and I, I, I couldn't figure out why. And, you know, back then in my Berkeley days, I was playing a lot of merengue music every Friday and Saturday night, you know. And so, you know, we were playing hard. I used to get bumps. And I was like, man, and it would hurt. <laughs> you dig it hurt, man. You put the horn up there, it's like a shock. And then, so I would have to, um, you know, a bump would form, pus would go in it, and you had to squeeze the pus out, and oh man, to, to try to make it not hurt. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why I kept on getting these bumps until this clinic. And thinking about it, I believe it was Slide Hampton. Right? This is what he said. He said, you know, if you're getting bumps on your lips from playing, it's because you got to keep your mouthpiece clean. And I was like, well, okay, I'm listening. I mean, I, I believe my mouthpiece is always clean. He said, no, you got to keep your mouthpiece clean, clean it out frequently. You know, you have a, you know, a mouthpiece brush, which is this, you know, use dishwashing soap, you know, and clean it out. And then this is the other thing. When it's in the case, you know, sometimes you have cases with, you know, little holes and pockets that you can put your mouthpiece in. No, get a mouthpiece case and keep the case clean, right? And put your mouthpiece in the case, you know? And I started doing that. Bumps gone. Fanito. <laughs> yeah, dick. Done. And I was like, I never got a bump again. And I was like, okay, respect. Big respect, man. Because that was very irritating. And he also taught us, if you do get a bump, how to fix it. Now, be careful. I'm going to tell you what he said. And he said, okay, you got to squeeze the pus out. And then you, you boil a little hot water and you get a rag and you dip the rag in the hot water and let the um, water cool because you don't want to burn yourself. And then you just apply the hot rag on your lip to bring the swelling down. And this is like emergency. Like if you got a play and you got this bump and it's, you know, this will work. All right, tip two. Now... This is a little tricky one. It's smart. Okay, so let's say you got to come in on a, you know, a high note, right? The very first note of the piece. You don't want to be nervous about it. You know, just relax. And it always helps if you could hear what you're going to play before you play it. You know, you always hear teachers talk about 
that you try to hear it, right? Now, not everybody has perfect pitch. I do not. I have relative pitch. I mean, I've been playing long enough where you just start to hear things, right? Now, for some reason, if you can't hear the pitch before you play it, check out what master teacher Bill Adam showed me. Yeah, I, it, it, was, it was real slick. Check it out. Now, if you want to know what the pitch of that note is, which is C, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Got it. you see that? Wow, man, that, that's slick. That's, that's a hustle. I love that, man. When he showed me that, I was like, nice, nice. You dig? Because you tap on the mouthpiece, and it produces that pitch, which is a concert B flat written C. Because, you know, trumpet is a B flat instrument, so it's a transposing instrument. So, you know, if it's concert B flat, we play up one whole step, which would be C. I and, mean, you know, I don't know where I, that came from, where I say written C from orchestration class or something. So, concert B flat written C. So that means transposed, right? So you're able to get that C pitch. Now, as long as you know your intervals, which is like a series of two notes, the pitch between two notes, you should be cool. You, dig? you should be able to find where that note is. You know, so now, yes, of course, you could just put the horn to your face and light, like softly play it before you start. But dig this. You know, you're around cats and they're watching. Everybody's always watching. So, you know, you don't want a cat to know that maybe you're not sure of the pitch of that first note. You dig? He's like, yo, you cool? Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So, you could do it that. You know, you could always just put the horn to your face and do a test note if you can't hear it. Or, and then the cats around you may know that you're, you know, you're not hearing that. Or, just do you know, the tap of the thing, you know, the, the bop, 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 and you get that sound, you know, the, the concert B-flat written C. And then you could navigate as long as you know your intervals, right? Then you should be cool. All right, let's keep it popping. All right, number three. Always breathe in the time of music. I learned this from a um, great professor at Rutgers University named William Fielder. His nickname was Profs, short for professor, right? Now he said, always breathe in the time of music. Now, if you're playing free music, whatever, it's free, you know, breathe whenever. But if it's in time, he said, always breathe in the time of music. So if you have an entrance on one, Breathe on four. One, two, three. And you want it to be up and out, right? Inhalation, there's two parts to the breath, inhalation and exhalation, right? Inhalation, and I'm gonna do a whole video on breathing, but inhalation is passive, exhalation is active, right? I don't I do not believe that inhalation could be active because this is active me breathing in in an active manner. <gasps> no way. Not gonna happen. You breathe in passively. <gasps> Exhale. <sighs> active. Right? Think about a pitcher. When you see a pitcher go back to pitch a ball, they don't go back like this. You see them come back back like this and bow, then active. And it all happens in one motion. You don't see a pitcher come back, slow and stop and then throw because they lose momentum. And that goes the same thing with golf, it goes the same thing with hockey, say everything, kicking a football, right? So when we breathe, we breathe in the time of music, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation is Passive exhalation is active. And we have an entrance on one. Breathe on four. One, two, three. <gasps> one motion. Now, if you need more air, breathe on three. If it's a longer phrase, one, two. <sighs> Make 
make sense. That was number three. Okay, number four. Hey, by the way, this is a good time to press the subscribe button. If you like the information that I'm bringing you, please subscribe and tell some friends and bring them over. All right? Cool. So this is number four. Donald Byrd would always tell me or talk to me about feeling the resonance in the horn or the valve block where this feels like it's, it's vibrating, you know? And when you get in the, to the center of the sound, the valve block is like, you know, you, you feel this vibration in the horn, you know? And so, you know, for me, I gauge center of the sound, of course, by listening and really just slotting right in the center of the tone and the sound just zings. But also a true tell sign for me that I'm really hitting the center is on my Shelky X3, I feel the valve block just like massaging my hand almost. And that may, I don't know, that's the only way I could describe it. It's really buzzing, you know. So that's something that maybe you guys could explore when you're playing and really looking for the center of the sound, feeling how the horn vibrates in your hands. Yes. Yeah, check that out. Okay, well, listen, that's it. That's all I got for you. DB Talks Trumpet Episode 2. And I really hope you enjoyed uh, what I presented today. And thank you guys so much for all the wonderful support. You know, the channel is growing and the subscriptions, you know, the subscribers is growing and I really appreciate it. So listen, I will see you soon.